Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with Him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Father, and of his Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And happy Mother's Day to all mothers. And I hope that many of you today can get together with your mothers and grandmothers to celebrate them and all that they have been in your life. We begin our Mass by opening our hearts and asking the Lord to help us to be loving people like our mothers. And we ask forgiveness for any way that we've taken them or anybody for granted. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh, splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, and may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And we give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal Easter mystery within us so that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who is your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the Twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You, brothers, must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, with a ten-stringed lute sing him songs. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. Lord, let your mercy be on us, as we place our trust in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers, 
it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. This is the word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am now going to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the place to where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father as well. From this moment, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Little Andrew is four years old and recently sent his mother ballistic by spilling his juice all over the new carpet. 
And as she screamed in frustration, little Andrew looked up with tears in his eyes and he said, Mommy, you forgot to ask Jesus to make you a nice person today, didn't you? Do we teach our kids right or what? Happy Mother's Day. It's not easy being a mum. They tell us, I don't know how they work these things out, but they tell us that by the time a child reaches 18, a mother has to handle some 18,000 hours of extra child-generated time. That's about 1,000 extra hours a year. And now, with coronavirus, you can add on all those extra happy hours of homeschooling. No, no, it really isn't easy being a mum. It requires nothing less than sacrificial love, the like of which can be found only in God, as revealed by Jesus in today's gospel, as he says goodbye to his disciples before he laid down his life for us. In fact, he's just like a mother. He says he's going off to prepare a place for us, going off to prepare our room. I had fun Googling Mother's Day on the internet. And while many cultures and religions have ways of honoring mothers and motherhood, our present practice, it just dates back to the beginning of the 20th century in the United States. And apparently the tradition of giving mothers gifts on Mother's Day, it started here in Australia at least, by a lady called Mrs. Janet Hayden from Leichhardt in Sydney in 1924. She began the tradition during a visit to a patient in the state home for women, because there she met many lonely and forgotten mothers. So to cheer them up, she rounded up support from local school children and local businesses to donate and to bring gifts to the women. Of course, every mum has a mum. So all of us, mums and non-mums, we have someone to remember and to be grateful to and to be grateful for. The term mother, well, it describes the woman who looked after you, raised you, worried over you, encouraged you, and endured the separation of you when you became an adult. It includes your biological or your adopted mother or a surrogate mother figure. You're probably, your mother is probably the only person in the world who without reservation, without reservation, wants the absolute best for you. However, among animals, only human mothers do not know often when to relinquish or let go of their young. Mother birds, they can push them out of the nest. And the mother cow, she butts and nudges them away from her udder to independence. So a mother can give herself much heartache if she hasn't learned to let go and to let God, as they say in the AA program. Let go of your children and let God look after them. The greatest hurt we can give our mothers is to take them for granted. How easy it is to take things for granted. The food placed on the table, the house clean, the laundry washed and ironed, the being delivered and picked up to our venues, the worrying, and we may never so much as say thank you. I hope we do today, but all those other days, the 364 of them, 
during the year to say thank you. And there's often a great yawning gap for young mothers between the congratulations for having achieved motherhood and the needed follow-up support for being a mother. A new mother, she can go from feeling like a film star, surrounded by flowers and presents and friends, admiring the sleeping bundle for a couple of weeks. And then everybody disappears back to normal life, and she's left literally holding that bundle that needs endless feeding, washing, and sleepless nights with very little moral or real support, especially when living away from your family. There's also a great difference in the expectation placed on mothers, you know, born over the last 100 years, 100 years. My mother would have been 100 last month. Well, she knew and loved her grandmother, her mother, her siblings, her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren. So that's six generations of loving. She never had a chance to go to secondary school, as she had at the age of eight to be the mother to her four siblings when her father died at 35 years of age, and her mother had to work as a cleaning lady in the offices of the Queensland Railways. Her youngest brother, he was only a baby. So I was just musing that she would have hugged six generations of people and hugged and cradled in her arms four generations of people. So much giving, and yet so much potential never tapped. Never tap. So what a great mystery that is. And I know each of you, um, you have your own memory and a story to tell. And I hope you do that today. Tell your mum's story. And while I'm hogging the camera and the microphone here, I'd like to just note also the great bond that exists between a priest and his mother. Must have something to do with not being married, I'm sure. And in my generation of Augustinians, we knew each other's mum. And they knew us all, and they prayed for us all, and we knew that. So I thank God for all these heavenly mums, Carol, Grace, Norma, Lillian, Winifred, Agatha, Millie, Dawn, and Monica. Thank you, mums, for showing us God's love. And thank you, God, for giving us a mother's love. And what was the last thing Jesus did on the cross? He shared his mother with us. Son, daughter, behold your mother. We're going to have a blessing now of those who are expecting babies and all of you mums as well and grandmums. So first we have for the expectant mothers. Let us pray. God, our Father, shower your blessings upon these parents. Watch over and support them and bring their children into this world safely and in good health. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For all you mums and grandmas, loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers and nurturers, let the example of their faith and love shine forth. 
Grant that we, their sons and daughters, honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. And grant this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now recite our faith, the Apostles' Creed, our belief in God, and we do it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, St. Peter has spoken of our dignity as Christians, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart. United in those gifts, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all mothers across Australia as we celebrate Mother's Day, that in these anxious times, they may enjoy the respect of their families and be able to be a source of calm and hope for others. Lord, hear us. We pray that deacons, faithful in their service to the word and the poor, may be an invigorating symbol for the entire church. Lord, hear us. We pray for those whose employment has ceased during the COVID-19 pandemic, remembering today those who work in the arts, musicians, singers, actors, technicians, and other assistants, along with casual workers and people on temporary visas unable to access government support, that they will soon receive the assistance which they need. Lord, hear us. We pray for protection from COVID-19 for our indigenous communities, those in refugee camps, in the poor and cramped neighborhoods of cities in South America, Africa, and Asia, migrant workers in crowded accommodation, and the crews of ships and liners. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our we pray for our departed mothers, along with those who, in these times, have died isolated from their families. And those who mourn their deaths will have faith and hope, as Jesus has prepared for the dead a place of joy in the Father's house. We remember in particular Sheila Macdara, Sylvia Versace, Kenneth Long, Anne Irvin, Margaret Crowley, and those whose memories we recall, Jack Lange, James Hannon, Dot Riddington, Barbara Gavetska, Pat Leader, Barry Leader, Antonio and Francesca Gilanese. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a moment in silence for any special intention that lies in our own hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, our way, our truth, 
and our life, sacrificed and risen, enfold our world in your tender embrace and give us the grace to be tender to one another. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. shall be last and our eyes are open we'll hear like never before and we'll speak in new ways and we'll see God's face in places we've never known and I live with you deep in your heart oh I live with you. Rest now in me. So pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Prayer over our offerings. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful for his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen so therefore overcome with Easter joy every land every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God our Father, we now ask you, to send your Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. The night before he died, Jesus your Son showed us how much you love us. 
When he was at supper with his disciples, he took some bread and he gave you, Father, thanks and praise. And he broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine. Again, he thanked you, Father, and he gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And so, loving Father, we remember how Jesus died and rose again to save our world. He put himself into our hands to be the very offering we could make to you today. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this sacred meal. May this Holy Spirit Bring us closer together in the family of the church with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who serve your people in any way. Remember, Father, our families and friends and all those we do not love as we should. Remember those who have died, especially our mothers and grandmothers. Bring them home to you, to be with you forever. And gather us all together into your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and our mother, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, Peter and Paul, the saints, Augustine, Monica, Kieran, Cecilia. There, all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So, we call on God uh, as our Father, but in fact he's also our Mother. He's our Father, Mother God. And so we pray to him in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially the present evil of this pandemic. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for the great gift of peace, especially in each one of your families. Lord Jesus Christ, 
You said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look then not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. So we offer each other now the sign of Christ's peace. I hope you were able to be a little more intimate at home than we were here. So we call on Jesus as a gentle Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Jesus keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen. died and rose that you might know his love be forgiven Jesus walked the miles that it took to reach us Jesus touched the leper that you shouldn't touch. Jesus wept for Lazarus. Don't you think he'll do the same? You and me, we are dead. We are in our graves. Jesus rose for you. And he rose for me. He died and rose that we might know his peace.
So let us pray. Graciously, be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with these heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. We're still here. Despite all the little relaxations, we're still here, and you're still there, but you're here too, and that's really important. Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers on this day. I, I second Father John's words of greeting to you in that, uh, that most beautiful homily uh, that he shared with us, with us today. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful celebration today at home, uh, and just remember that it's... Uh, the, the, the church in the family, the domestic church, the church in the home uh, that, that you are. And as you gather today at the table, and I hope you will gather to celebrate your mothers, that every table is uh, a sacred place. In the bulletin today, and uh, this notice I think would have been sent to the parents in the sacramental program by now, there's... Um, quite a number of points there. Uh, basically, the sacramental program has, has, to, uh, has had some major adjustments. We don't have final dates as yet, so um, it's basically been uh, postponed till, till the second half of the year, and uh, it will be a very busy time for all of us. But we continue to pray for our sacramental families and our children our RCIA uh, catechumen and candidates as well, who are patiently waiting out there, uh, and also those who are on the Alpha journey uh, that continues uh, on, online. So um, thank you for your ongoing support, uh, and uh, please stay in touch. Uh, uh, our numbers are in the bulletin, and some of you may need to talk at some stage, may need to unload so please feel free. Uh, reconciliation continues five to six on Saturdays in the parish centre here at St Kieran's or, or by appointment. So have a wonderful day. Uh, and this day, I guess, reminds us, at least in memory, of the importance of uh, physical contact, uh, the importance of um, family, and I guess in many ways what uh, what we're missing during this time, but also what we're strengthening during this time. Thank you. Now, we have a little uh, uh, presentation. You may recognise some people in this presentation.
we're on. Can I have permission to tell a Mother's Day joke? I think that's a yes. Yeah. A hundred and one, a hundred one year old great grandmum in Kentucky called Hattie Mae McDonald. And of course, the reporter came, and as usual, they asked the same question Give us some health tips for reaching the age of 101. So she had to think, then she said, Well, for better digestion, I drink beer. In the case of appetite loss, I drink white wine. For low blood pressure, I drink red wine. In the case of high blood pressure, I drink scotch. And when I have a cold, I drink snaps. Of course, the reporter was quite bemused, and he said, well, when do you drink water? Oh, dear, she said, I've never been that sick. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you all safe, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we go now in great peace, great joy, to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we'll pray that all you one day be restored and there will be a Christian by our love, by our love. Yes, there will be a Christian by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will walk with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll save each one's dignity and save each one's pride. For there will be a Christian by our love. By our love, let's then know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one 